Welcome and thank you for joining me. This video provides a brief look at Agile business architecture. In other words, we will look at how to build and improve business architecture with agility. My name is Leanne Simonson with Simonson Consulting. Agile business architecture is an approach that gives just enough attention to the big picture, even when you are focused on a particular priority business need. It is a challenge for sure to make the case for looking beyond a priority need, especially if that need comes with some urgency. But failing to consider the big picture can result in the delivery of the wrong solution. Business capabilities are critical to agile business architecture. Business capabilities make up the fabric of business architecture and are the mechanism for achieving business goals. You might think of business capabilities as business functions armed with the right stuff. Technology is just one part of the equation. There are many ways to strengthen business capabilities. One way is to focus on process. For instance, let's say the goal is to increase profit by 50% over the next three years. Improving inefficient, resource-burning processes would help maximize profit. Another way to strengthen business capabilities is to improve the abilities of people. For instance, if a business aims to be best of breed, competitor analysis skills are vital. Other ways to strengthen business capabilities are to recruit the right people, to buy or build new software, to purchase ergonomic chairs. You get the point. Business capabilities depend on having the right people, the right abilities, the right processes, the right technologies. In other words, all the right stuff to perform business functions. There is a lot to consider with business architecture. How can we study the big picture when agile typically means the rapid delivery of specific high priority business value? Is agile business architecture an oxymoron? Far from. You don't need to dive into a lot of detail, and you don't need to study areas beyond the reach of the priority need in focus. But you do need to look at just enough of the big picture to make sure that your solution is the right fit. To illustrate, I'd like to share a case example. The setting is the Earth Tones Art Gallery. The gallery is a pleasant, peaceful environment where customers tend to linger. The mission of the gallery is to sell meaningful art to satisfied customers. The Earth Tones Art Gallery features sculptures made from natural materials, such as copper, reclaimed wood, stone, and plant life. The sculptures often incorporate sound, such as water features or chimes, thus the name Earth Tones. The materials used are often one-of-a-kind pieces with a personal story behind their acquisition, such as copper pipes taken from a church organ. Customers who commission an art sculpture are able to choose materials they find meaningful. Each art sculpture is unique. The materials do tend to be costly. Because of this cost, the gallery only acquires materials from suppliers at the point that the materials are selected for a commissioned art sculpture, and a 50% down payment is received from the customer. The gallery has requested that we automate their process for providing customers with cost estimates. Customers are currently given handwritten estimates based on the most recent information the gallery has on the availability and pricing of the selected materials. Here is the gallery's current process. I will walk you through six steps. If the customer shows an interest in commissioning an art sculpture, the curator discusses the type of art sculptures created by the gallery and the special attributes of available materials. In order to give the customer a cost estimate on a custom piece, the curator assists the customer in specifying the desired materials on a commissioned art form. The curator, referring to internal documentation of materials the gallery has chosen to feature, along with current pricing, provides the customer with a written estimate and adds this estimate information to the commissioned art form. Because the availability and pricing of materials is fluid, the customer is promised a call with a firm quote within a few days. The curator places the completed commissioned art form on the administrative assistant's desk. 
The administrative assistant then enters the information in a physical logbook, slips the original form inside the logbook, and emails the owner that the logbook needs her attention. The owner reviews each request and checks the desired materials against information found on supplier websites. Occasionally, materials are no longer available that match the customer's desired materials, and the owner swaps them out for something similar. This can be disappointing to the customer, as the actual materials originally selected might have carried significant meaning. A formal quote is prepared by the owner based on decisions she made during her review of supplier websites. She also records the details in the logbook. The current material availability and pricing document is updated, if needed, also based on the owner's review of supplier websites, when she selects the distinctive materials she wishes to feature from what is currently available. The owner asks the curator to call the customer with the quote information. The curator then calls the customer and relays the quote information from the logbook. He also offers to mail a formal quote or have one available for pickup. The hope is that the customer then, during the call or in a subsequent visit, commissions the art sculpture and pays the required 50% down of the quoted amount, at which point the gallery would immediately acquire the materials. The gallery has a computer system where commissioned art and payments are entered and where billing is handled. The gallery is hoping to extend the use of this system to an automated estimate process. Although we have looked beyond the estimate process, the automation of the estimate process has been deemed the highest priority need. The gallery would like to automate their quote process in the future, but the priority for the gallery right now is to appear more professional and responsive during the customer-facing estimate process. What would be your next steps in response to this request? Perhaps you would create a user story such as this. As the gallery's curator, I wish to help the customer select unique, meaningful materials and to provide the customer with a polished and professional estimate so the customer leaves the gallery well-informed and eager to do business with the gallery. If we went ahead and provided a solution for exactly what the gallery has requested, we would indeed improve their process. But let's step through the process again and look into the impacts and dependencies. We will consider inputs, sources, outputs, destinations, and controls over when a process happens. If the customer shows an interest in commissioning an art sculpture, the curator discusses the type of art sculptures created by the gallery and the special attributes of available materials. In order to give the customer a cost estimate on a custom piece, the curator assists the customer in specifying the desired materials on a commissioned art form. The curator, referring to internal documentation of materials the gallery has chosen to feature, along with current pricing, provides the customer with a written estimate and adds this estimate information to the commissioned art form. Because the availability and pricing of materials is fluid, the customer is promised a call with a firm quote within a few days. The curator places the completed commissioned art form on the administrative assistant's desk. The administrative assistant then enters the information in a physical logbook, slips the original form inside the logbook, and emails the owner that the logbook needs her attention. The owner reviews each request and checks the desired materials against information found on supplier websites. Occasionally, materials are no longer available that match the customer's desired materials, and the owner swaps them out for something similar. This can be disappointing to the customer, as the actual materials originally selected might have carried significant meaning. A formal quote is prepared by the owner based on decisions she made during her review of supplier websites. She also records the details in the logbook. 
The current material availability and pricing document is updated, if needed, also based on the owner's review of supplier websites, when she selects the distinctive materials she wishes to feature from what is currently available. The owner asks the curator to call the customer with the quote information. The curator then calls the customer and relays the quote information from the logbook. He also offers to mail a formal quote or have one available for pickup. The hope is that the customer then, during the call or in a subsequent visit, commissions the art sculpture and pays the required 50% down of the quoted amount, at which point the gallery would immediately acquire the materials. In order to build the best business capabilities around a business function, it is helpful to look at what I call naked core functions and flows. This view includes only the core functions and flows of information from sources directly to where the information is used. We will be setting aside controls over when a process happens in this view, as these may be different in the future. Let's start by looking at just the flow of information about the customer's desired materials. The customer specifies desired materials, which are used to prepare an estimate. Desired materials information is also written on the commissioned art form that ultimately is used to make material selections and pricing determinations and to prepare a quote. The administrative assistant simply moves information about the desired materials from a physical form to a logbook. This step can go away as it's just a pass-through step that doesn't change anything. We can take out the logbook too for now as it is not a core function or flow. The desired materials will now flow from the customer to three core functions. Prepare estimate, make material selections and pricing determinations, and prepare quote. The estimate flows to the customer as well as to the core functions of make material selections and pricing determinations and prepare quote. Here again, the administrative assistant simply moves information about the estimate from a physical form to a logbook. As we talked about, this pass-through step in the logbook can go away. Let's look at a clean view of the estimate flow. The estimate flows to the customer as well as to the core functions of make material selections and pricing determinations and prepare quote. In order to make material selections and pricing determinations to be used in preparing a quote, information is needed from supplier websites. Updates are then made to the current material availability and pricing information, which will be referenced in subsequent estimates. The material availability and current pricing information used in the quote process can go directly to the curator to use in preparing subsequent estimates. Let's look at a clean view of the material availability and pricing flow. Availability and current supplier pricing information flows from supplier websites to the core function of make material selections and pricing determinations. These determinations are then used to prepare the quote as well as to provide more current information for any subsequent estimates. Let's now look at the flow of the quote. We can take out the logbook as well as the curator's pass-through step of getting the quote to the customer. The prepared quote can be shown to flow directly to the customer. We are now left with just our naked core functions and flows. Our core functions are prepare estimate, make material selections and pricing determinations, and prepare quote. We now ask the gallery if this is essentially what they are trying to accomplish. We ask, do you want to do anything differently or new in terms of your core functions and flows of information? Or is the goal to support these core functions and flows illustrated here in the most efficient and effective way? We ask them to imagine these functions just happen all at once without any time delays. After some thought, the gallery owner tells us that the only reason to offer an estimate to a customer is because the quote takes time to put together. There is no reason to provide an estimate to the customer if a quote can be provided right away. 
The gallery owner tells us that she assumes that the estimate process will still be necessary, but in a perfect world, the customer would be able to obtain a firm quote right away. Aha! We now paint a new picture to represent our future core functions and flows. We do not need to provide an estimate to the customer if we can provide a quote to the customer right away. We will move forward with this assumption. So what are we left with? We have two remaining activities. We make material selections and pricing determinations. In order to make material selections and pricing determinations, we still need information from supplier websites and the desired materials of customers. We also prepare a quote. We need the customer's desired materials as well as the determinations made from the review of supplier websites. We are then able to provide the customer with a quote for commissioned art. We add in who is going to complete the steps, where the data will be stored, as well as timings. We are starting to arm our naked core functions with the right processes, people, abilities, technology, you know, the right stuff. We are building business capabilities. Let's walk through our new picture. We have eliminated the estimate process and we will make the quote available to the customer immediately. In order to make material selections and pricing determinations, we still need information from supplier websites as well as desired materials of customers. The owner is not in a position to pre-purchase and stock items that are highly desirable before the receipt of the 50% down payment for commissioned art. The owner decides to relinquish control to the curator to determine which materials to feature, a task for which the curator is well suited. The owner acknowledges that the price swings have made her nervous, but she is inspired to transfer this responsibility now that she sees the impact of doing so more clearly. The curator will now be empowered to adjust the material, availability, and pricing information throughout the day by monitoring supplier sites. The curator also checks on up-to-the-minute availability of items for customers. This real-time check on materials encourages the customer to act quickly as the risk of a meaningful item becoming unavailable is highlighted. The curator and or the customer through a self-help kiosk can select desired materials and receive a quote immediately. Still in the pleasant ambiance of the gallery, the customer is expected to be more inclined to commission the art. With 50% of the quoted price down, the curator can then acquire the desired materials with the customer present and assure the customer that the materials have been secured. This new process will better support the ultimate goal of the gallery to sell meaningful art to satisfied customers. We have improved the gallery's business capabilities. Let's now revisit the original priority need and compare it against our new future to be vision. We were requested to automate the estimate process. This no longer fits, does it? Let's revisit our user story. This user story doesn't fit anymore either, does it? The customer no longer needs to wait a few days for a quote to move ahead with commissioning an art sculpture. Would we have baked in an old inefficient process that causes the customer to leave the gallery without commissioning the art if we had moved ahead with automating the estimate process? If so, would we have known we had done so? Would the gallery have known? If we had launched an agile iteration focused on the original priority need, would we have flushed out the same future vision? Maybe, or maybe not. Would we have converged through refactoring to the same to-be vision? At what cost? Or would we have diverged to something more distant from this to-be vision? What if we were presented with a far more complex need? Let's review what is just enough attention to give to business architecture in an agile iteration. Begin with the customer's express priority business need. Determine impacts and dependencies in the business around the need. I think of this as exploring the business ecosystem around the need.
This involves studying a dependent set of business functions and their impact on each other, but not diving into the details within the business functions. In other words, we can black box or encapsulate the detail within a function and defer to the Agile process to elaborate the function or user story built around it. It is also important to follow information from its source through all of its transformations through to where it is used. In other words, we want to understand the full life cycle of information with all of its transformations. In our example, the life cycle of an art sculpture from conception through realization hasn't been fully fleshed out in the interest of keeping this case example small. I encourage you to spend some time considering the risks in drawing a scope line through the life cycle of this information. It is also important to look for shifts that should occur from a current state to a future state of the business before we introduce technology and other solutions. This is where an agile approach that is laser focused on a priority need can miss the boat. We can't assume that the business stakeholders have worked through the impacts and dependencies around a priority need. Technology experts also introduce new possibilities, such as being able to concurrently perform tasks that are sequential in the manual world, and we can't assume that the business stakeholders have identified these improvement possibilities. We can, however, partner with the business to build business capabilities. So how is this Agile again? Seems like a lot of ceremony. This is Agile in that we can stay focused on the priority need to be addressed, but still think about just enough of the impacts in the business ecosystem around the need. To neglect to do this could cause a lot of rework down the road. Or, worse yet, we might send the business down a less than optimal path, perhaps paving a cow path, as they say, never realizing the best version of the business. And this doesn't need to resemble a heavy upfront waterfall-like analysis effort. The Agile iteration can elaborate the details as long as we have good bones, you might say. Good future state bones where we understand the impacts. We don't want to bake in inefficiencies or a lesser version of what the business could be. Our goal is to build business capabilities, not just knock off a priority item in the backlog. In an agile environment, we need to rapidly deliver business architecture recommendations as part of a truly high business value solution for a priority need. By the way, developing business architecture with agility gets easier as business architecture matures. The more you iterate business architecture, the less likely sweeping changes will be needed. The business becomes a network of well-designed and well-armed functions. Each function becomes more encapsulated with the impact to other functions minimized. Some of you will recognize this as a parallel to what we try to achieve in software and in architectural components, high cohesion and low coupling. We want to arm these highly cohesive, loosely coupled business functions with the right stuff. This is how we build business capabilities and create a fabric of business architecture that enables the business to achieve business goals. Incidentally, once you identify core functions, these core functions are a great base for developing well-formed user stories around them. In your environment, enterprise business architecture work might also be at play. But when you're in a position where you need to respond to a priority business need, a more surgical and limited loop through the business architecture is needed. Ideally, both approaches are used. Because you can impact business capabilities with each and every Agile iteration, Agile business architecture is important, regardless of whether a larger business architecture effort is underway. Here are some key points to remember. We want to be responsive and focused on business priorities in order to deliver business value. This is true. But we don't want to leap ahead so quickly that we pave a cow path. 
We also don't want to invest more study than is necessary to accomplish these aims, pulling an effort away from priorities and slowing down the delivery of business value. We need to give just enough attention to the big picture, even when focused on a particular priority business need, because failing to do so can result in the delivery of the wrong solution. As Albert Einstein said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Thank you for joining me.